Deacon. Evening all. I'm sure you've got a lot of people in the crowd that wanted to be midwives. Any participants that uh, want to be practice on by midwifery students? Um, this is actually why we built a VR simulator um, to help teach students how to take contractions. Um, so I'll give you a bit of a preview tonight. No, not my audio. No, so <laughs> be pretty cool if it was. Okay, so just a little bit of a background. Um, so what we're trying to teach students is what they call intrapartum contractions. So that just basically, intrapartum just means the process, the care through labour. Um, and what we're doing is they're actually palpating contractions. So the idea is it's uh, probably similar to trying to teach students about picking up pulses. So we're trying to attune their senses in order for them to pick up contractions and those contractions give the, uh, the midwife some information about the stages that the uh, patient is through the labour. So currently this is taught through basically theory. So here are some parameters. So the main three parameters is the contraction duration, the intensity and also the frequency, how often those contractions are happening. And those parameters then give the, uh, the midwife some information. So that's the theory training. The practical training at the moment is very, uh, very advanced. So hard contraction, medium, oh, medium, soft. So that's basically what they get. And the reason being is the current challenges with doing uh, uh, this kind of uh, training for students is you're trying to attune their senses to pick up these contractions, but you've got to find participants. So you can imagine a third, you know, a, a class of 30 students. I can't really go storming into a hospital room and, you know, all have a go, you know. So uh, the idea is, uh, and, and even if they do, you can think about the natural occurrence of these. How does the the teacher or the lecturer mark the students? There is no baseline for them to to mark the students off. Each student's going to get a different a different experience. Um, so yes, very difficult to find willing participants. Uh, so this is where why we sort of thought about uh, VR as a solution. So VR is uh, a very good solution for training. It's been uh, heavily used, as you probably well know, in, in training pilots. So I think the current estimate is that 80% of training for pilots is done in flight simulators. The 20% is actually done uh, with the physical craft itself. And so the idea of VR is a tool between, a, a tool between theory and real life practice. And generally it's very good in scenarios where they're difficult to access or completely inaccessible or it's very cost prohibitive. So for instance, if you want to do health and safety on a, uh, training on a mine for a group of 10, you don't want to shut the mine down in order to do some health and safety training. Um, so VA is mainly, uh, what, it's, what, what's, what its intent is to do is to stimulate the human senses um, and to improve user immersion throughout that training. So what you're trying to do is elicit emotional response or attune their senses, a customer's senses, to uh, what they're going to see in real life. Uh, it can also be, it doesn't necessarily have to be real life either. So it could be communication of ideas. So today, you know, VR is a, a tool to communicate. It's a new tool to communicate. It's a new medium. You know, we've, we've been constrained to text, images or videos. VR is that next step. So the idea that I can create something and be able to share that idea to someone else and for someone else to actually interact with that um, then allows them to understand the concepts that I'm trying to uh, maybe build or, or solve or just some ideas that I actually have. Um, so going along those lines and having a bit of understanding where VR sits, uh, we, we sort of asked the question, can the introduction of VR training solution improve current midwifery teaching techniques? Okay, so this is uh, Verity. Verity's a the mannequin's name. So yes, it is a bit scary. Uh, we are a bit lonely in the VR lab, so we need someone to keep us occupied or happy. Anyway, so... Um, Deacon 
developed uh, this, this system. So you'll see that in the second photo to the left there, that was the initial design. <laughs> it was a very rough prototype. It was actually created uh, with MDF, majority of it with MDF, laser cutted MDF for the legs, uh, the head. There was some 3D printed for the actual face itself that we, we glued on. Uh, we Is that hand Sorry? Is that hand <laughs> yes, 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 it is hand solo. <laughs> <laughs> good spot, good spot. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, and the stomach was also somewhat 3D printed. And then actually for the, the rest of the stomach, we actually carbogged it. So it was a really concept prototype engineering black box solution. Just get it working and see if, it, uh, see if it's any benefit whatsoever. So that was the first design. And you'll see our second design up here. We actually had uh, the lucky chance of having an overseas student that was an industrial designer. And uh, she made our engineering designs look a lot more beautiful. And so this one's actually all 3D printed in-house. You'll get to see this at the, at the conference as well. And what you'll see here is it's actually printed in four sections. It's divided. Um, and even the rubber uh, membrane up there is also printed as well. So there was a, quite a bit of challenge of, of printing that rubber out. We're, we're very lucky at the university. We have some really uh, good printers that, that can basically change their properties. Uh, we can uh, change some parameters in order to change properties and, and print out some rubber, rubber membranes. So that was actual physical structure there. And there are some images of the sort of first iterations of the, the virtual environment. Okay, this slide is missing some stuff, but I can fill it in, I guess. Uh, so basically, here, yeah, thanks, thanks to trainee to virtual birthing. So okay, so the idea here is we've actually um, got a virtual environment. So uh, the the background is actually our cave, so that's just for a bit of a context. But the user to the right hand side is wearing a, a DK2, so this is um, the second Oculus development kit, and they're actually inside that virtual hospital in the in the background, and they're actually. Um, putting their hand on that rubber membrane and underneath that rubber membrane is a haptic device. And so haptic device is uh, a uh, part of a, a device or piece of hardware for virtual reality in order to um, give people a, some, stimulate their sense of touch. So it gives force feedback basically. Um, so there's just like a single degree freedom haptic device under there and that haptic device provides force against that rubber membrane and then reduces the force. And that those, uh, that change in force is simulating the contraction. And then we can just control the intensity and the strength uh, through the programming aspects. Okay, it's done one of these. I'll bring them all up. No, I'll go back. Okay, so we've also built in there a leap motion hand uh, tracking unit. So. Uh, anyone that's put on a VR headset that hasn't used the hand controllers understand they lose, lose sight of all their limbs. Uh, it can be quite an unusual experience. And in this case, when we're wanting to guide them to the actual uh, point of interest, uh, they're seeing their hand is of, of quite importance. So we've got the physical uh, mannequin themselves that provide some guidance, but then we've also got the hand tracking unit where they can see the hand and guide, to the, guide themselves to the, the um, contraction point. I'll bring all these ones up. Okay, so the next part we also did as well is that we also provide, so once they get this practicing of contractions, uh, uh, identifying the contractions down, they have a physical clock that represents the real time so they can actually time the contractions as they're, as they're going through the scenario. Um, we also actually have in the scene some noises. So like there's a TV in the scene, we can change, uh, have, have storm come in, rain come in, um, have a fan, there's a loud fan in the scene as well. And the idea is once they get the, um, the concept of actually picking up, the, they tune their senses to pick up the contractions, the idea is can we distract them and will that um, put them off actually timing that contraction? And so therefore it's basically for them to keep concentrated on that timing and their sense in order to, um, uh, even if distractions occur like they would in the real world. Okay, so the last sort of section of the trainer itself is 
We've built this virtual environment. We've got haptic feedback in order to provide the, the simulation of a, of a contraction. We're able to, one thing I did forget to mention about that audio, we also provide the, the trainer a mic. So they can actually talk to uh, the, the student that's being trained while they're in the environment. Because one thing is when you put the headset on and they've got noise in the environment, then we can't actually communicate with them. So we can communicate them through that, that, that point. So we've got audio feedback as well. The last thing we actually built was actually, um, so one challenge sometimes with building a virtual environments or gaming or simulations, etc., is that sometimes it can be somewhat static. So you can't actually change the parameters in the scene, or maybe there's a series of 10 parameters, but that, that's, that's all that the end user gets given. So in this case, what we did is we actually built a web interface. Um, and that web interface, actually, they can build uh, the scenarios that they want on the fly. And those scenarios then update the virtual scene, update the parameters in the virtual scene, and they can change between the profiles that they want and choose the profile that they want and run the scenario that they need to run. So this allows them to um, basically use the tool and attune it to their profession and how they want to teach the students. And uh, we don't have to keep running back and, and changing those parameters for them each time they want to uh, want to come up with another scenario. Yeah, wrong button again. Okay, so we I will be presenting at the um, BuzzCon f Festival, so it be great for you to come along. Um, what I will be going more in depth about is just some of the uh, technical detail with the 3D printing, uh, the building of the virtual environment, the haptic device itself, hand tracking, audio information, and just the, the web-based interface. We'll also have demonstrations down there as well, so you'll be able to actually have a try at this. Anyone that wants to become a midwife uh, can come down, or maybe even midwives themselves give, give us some feedback. Um, so yeah, please come along.